In this video, I want to introduce you to the number i, which is sometimes called the imaginary, imaginary unit. And what you're going to see here, and it might be a little bit difficult to fully appreciate right from the get-go, that it's a, a more bizarre number than some of the other wacky numbers we learn in mathematics, like pi or e. And it's more bizarre because it doesn't have a, a tangible value in the sense that we're normally used to defining numbers. i is defined as the number whose square is equal to negative 1. This is the definition. This is the definition of i. And it leads to all sorts of interesting things. Now, some places, you will see i defined this way, i as being equal to the principal square root of negative 1. I want you to just point out to you that this is not wrong, and it might make sense to you. You know, If something squared is negative 1, then maybe it's the, it's the principal square root of negative 1. And so these seem to be almost the same statement. But I just want to make you a little bit careful. When you do this, some people will even go as far as saying this is wrong, and it actually turns out that they are wrong to say that this is wrong. But when you do this, you have to be a little bit careful about what it means to take a principal square root of a negative number, and it being defined for imaginary, and as we'll learn in the future, complex numbers. But it, for, for your understanding, right now, you don't have to differentiate them. You don't have to split hairs between any of these definitions. Now, with this definition, let's just think about what the different powers of i are. Because you can imagine, if something squared is negative 1, if I take it to all sorts of powers, maybe that should give us all sorts of weird things. And what we'll see is that the powers of i are kind of neat, because they kind of cycle, or they do cycle, through a whole through, through a set of values. So I could start with, let's start with i to the 0th power. And so you might say, hey, look, anything to the 0th power is 1. So i to the 0th power is 1, and that is true. And you could actually derive that even from this definition. But this is pretty straightforward. Anything to the 0th power, including i, is 1. Then you say, OK, what is i to the first power? Well, anything to the first power is just that number times itself once. So that's just going to be i, really by the definition of what it means to take an exponent. So that completely makes sense. And then you have i to the second power i to the second power, well, by definition, i to the second power is equal to is equal to negative 1. Let's try i to the third power. I'll do this in a color I haven't used. i to the third power. i to the third power, well, that's going to be, that's going to be i to the second power times i. And we know that i to the second power is negative 1. So it's negative 1 times i. Let me make it clear. This is the same thing as this, which is the same thing as that. i squared is negative 1. So when you multiply it out, negative 1 times i will write as negative i. Now what happens if we take i to the fourth power? I'll do it, I'll do it up here. i to the fourth power. Well, once again, this is going to be i times i to the third power. So that's i times i to the third power i times i to the third power. But what was i to the third power? i to the third power was negative i. This over here is negative i. And so i times i would give you negative 1, but you have a negative out here. So it's i times i is negative 1, and then you have a negative. That gives you positive 1. That gives you positive. Let me write it down. So this is the same thing as, so this is i times negative i, which is the same thing as negative 1 times, remember, multiplication is commutative. If we're just multiplying a bunch of numbers, we can switch the order. This is the same thing as negative 1 times i times i. i times i, by definition, is negative 1. Negative 1 times negative 1 is equal to 1. So i to the fourth is the same thing as i to the 0th power. Now let's try i to the fifth power. i to the fifth power. Well, that's just going to be i to the fourth times i. And we know what i to the fourth is. It is 1. So it's 1 times i, or it is just i again. And so once again, it is exactly the same thing as i to the first power. Let's try, and just to see the pattern keep going, let's try i to the seventh power. Or sorry, i to the sixth power. i to the sixth power. Well, that's i times i to the fifth power. That's i times i to the fifth. i to the fifth, we already established, is just i. So it's i times i. It is equal to, by definition, i times i is negative 1. And then let's finish off. Well, we could keep going on this way. We can keep putting higher and higher powers of i here. And we'll see that it keeps cycling back. And in the next video, I'll teach you how taking an arbitrarily high power of i, how you can figure out what that's going to be. But let's just verify this cycle keeps going. 
i to the i to the seventh power is equal to i times i to the sixth power. i to the sixth power is negative one. i times negative one is negative i. And if you take i to the eighth, once again it'll be one. i to the ninth will be i again, so on and so forth.